Hello Stampers, Kelly Atchison at stampabub.com coming to you from Menasha, Wisconsin. I have an oldie but a goodie for you and this is very different than the cascading card that I made back in August of 2013. Holy cow, I said it was an oldie but goodie. So I'm going to show you how to cut and score and put this together and it's really a lot easier than it looks. And then I've also got this cute little box and I'm going to show you what's inside of it and show you how easy this is also. So let's get started. What you need to make your cascading card is two pieces of designer series paper that are the same that are six inches by eight inches. And here's what we're going to do. We're going to take a ruler and you're gonna measure on the six inch side and put a mark at three inches, which is half of your piece. So I've got my mark there. I'm gonna keep these stacked up like this and bring my trimmer in. I'm gonna put this mark right in my cutting channel and then I am going to put the corner, and remember I have both pieces here. Oops, here, almost made a fatal mistake. You want your two sides to be together that are the same. So these two sides are the same. We're going to try this again. I almost messed this up. We are going to put that mark in the cutting channel and then the corner right here in the cutting channel. And we're going to just cut off this edge. Just like that. Save these pieces because we're going to use them for the little candy box. And now we're going to score. So I'm going to take one piece, get that cutting blade out of the way, and we're going to score at two, four, and six on both pieces. And by the way, I'm just using some old designer series paper that I had for demonstration purposes here. Scoring again at two, four, and six. Now we are going to take both of these pieces and you're going to fold on your score lines and I'm just gonna fold kind of back and forth here. It's not really important how you do it right now because we may be folding it the other way once we figure out how to put this puppy together. Okay, there we go. So we've got both of these pieces. Now here's the trick to the cascading card. You're gonna take your scissors and you're gonna cut on the two outside score lines, not the middle one, on both pieces. And one piece you're gonna cut up from the bottom to halfway, and the other piece you're gonna cut down from the top to halfway on these two score lines. So I'm gonna take the bottom one right here and how much is half? Do you need to measure it? No, just guesstimate. Because if it's not enough, we can always go back and cut more. And if it's too far, it doesn't really matter. So I went from the bottom up. Now I'm going to go from the top down. And again, just about halfway. And don't do the middle score line, just the two outside ones. Okay. Now, you're going to take your pieces, just like this, and they're going to go like this, okay? So we're going to take this one and put the, long, the longer end or taller end in this slit, and the shorter end and shorter end together in that slit, and they're going to slide together just like this, okay? Now, you stand it up like this. This one comes back, you pull these two on the inside apart, just like that, all right? Now, what if you didn't want this pattern paper to be here? Well, let's do this again. Pull it apart, and now we're gonna do it the opposite way. So now we're gonna put the polka dots on the outside here. Just like that. And then you pull the two inside pieces apart. Hang on, mine got kind of pinched there. And now we have the polka dots. Isn't that cool? This is it. This is a cascading card. Now let me bring this one back in here. 
you're gonna put something on the front here and this is not very stable see how it just kind of wiggles all over the place you're going to do something with the front whether you want to cut a panel or I did a two and a half inch circle punch with Cajun craze here once you glue that on here that kind of holds your card so it's more stable and it's not all flopping around like that then I used the painted harvest stamp set and I stamped these images in Cajun Craze and Lemon Lime Twist. I mounted this starburst punched image on top of some of the 5 8 inch burlap ribbon. And those are on dimensionals under there. Okay, so that's my front. My back, I just put some panels on here and you just measure whatever size you want on the back. And I stamped my flower and you can see um, this technique on my blog yesterday. So here's my blog address. This is a technique I used for this flower and I used crushed curry, Cajun craze and chocolate chip and then Cajun craze here and a Cajun craze here and very vanilla. And this again stabilizes that card so it's not like all flopping around like this once you glue these images onto the front and the back. And isn't that just cool? This is just another fun fold. If you happen to go to my blog, I will have a link to the card that I made back in August of 2013. So this is an old technique. And um, I actually punched out a bunch of flowers and mounted them all over these little pieces so it was like really busy and crazy and kind of fun looking. Um, but this is your cascading card because it does this. Okay, now, what about my cute little matching box? Let me show you how easy this is. I've got a piece of Cajun Craze cardstock here and this is four and a half inches wide by seven and a half inches long. And we're gonna put it in on the long side here and we're gonna score at one and a half, three, four and a half, and six. Then we're gonna turn it the other way and score at one and a half and three. And this makes a little, like a mini milk carton type looking little box. So each one of these squares is about one and a half by one and a half. So this fits a really small little treat in it. So here's the trick to this. You're gonna come down here and you are going to cut at one end and you're cut, gonna cut off these corner pieces. And by the way, a little shout out to Sam Hammond. I got this idea from her. And then you're gonna to come to the other end and you're going to cut, but you're not gonna cut these corners off this time. We're gonna turn it, we're gonna skip this score line because if we cut here, that would cut the corners off. We're gonna skip that one and we're gonna to go to this one. And I'm just cutting the score line up to this first horizontal score line. And you're gonna do that on both of these pieces. Turn and do the same thing on the other side. Again, not cutting this one. I'm just gonna fold on all my score lines here. And you could use your bone folder to burnish this right now. That would be fine. For time purposes, I'm just not gonna do that. Okay, now that we have this all cut, we're gonna bring this one in. And now we're gonna bring these up and do our sides, just like that. We're gonna come in with this side and do our sides, just like that. These two pieces fold in, and this is what we have left. And we're gonna put a little clip at the top. Okay, do you wanna see that again? Okay, these two pieces right here we're gonna hold up, and then we're gonna come in like this with these sides. We're gonna bring this one up here, do this, fold these down, and these are the two pieces and we're gonna take one of these gold finder clips. You get 10 in a pack of these little cuties. And once we glue that all together, you just take your binder clip, put it right on the top, and you have this cute little milk carton. Now, do you wanna see what's inside mine? I used the leaf punch that goes with the Painted Harvest stamp set. So I've got my leaf punch and I punched out 
some of my scrap paper here from my background. So I just punched out a leaf and put, put a little burlap ribbon on there. Remember when I told you to save these triangular shaped pieces from cutting this card base? Now you're gonna put these in your paper cutter and you're gonna cut out one and a quarter inch squares that are gonna fit right on your box like this. So you can decorate it up with those scraps that were left over. Here we go. Look at that, I've got a Ferrero Rocher candy. And this is your fine hazelnut chocolates. So that fits perfectly in this cute little box. You could glue these, the burlap and the um, leaf on here if you wanted to, but I just clipped them like that. And isn't this just adorable? Make sure you check out my blog right here stampabove.com where I'll give you a link to my old card that I made and that was the whole point of this blog hop was to recreate an oldie but a goodie and I felt this was an oldie but a goodie. I love fun folds and this is just a really neat card. I hope you enjoyed it. If you don't have a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, hey, I'd love to earn your business. You can pop me an email at kelly at a stampabove.com and I would be happy to send you our new mini catalog. And this is the Painted Autumn designer series paper. This is some gorgeous, gorgeous paper. Here's the one that we use. We've got these cute little acorns. We've got some pumpkins and some more leaf images. These squares are really cute too. So this is a great pack of paper found in the holiday mini catalog. Remember, if you need any supplies and you don't have a demonstrator, you can hop on over to my blog. Address is right here and place an order there. I hope you like these cute little projects. Please make sure you continue on the blog hop. If you haven't been to the blog hop yet, head over to my blog. I'll have a link under the on the YouTube channel. I'll have a link for the blog hop there where you can see some other fabulous projects made by some very talented demonstrators. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.